In this tutorial, I'm going to show you what some of the um, default movement and interaction settings do in um, Unity's XR Interaction Toolkit. And to start, I'm just going to create um, a new material so that uh, I can stop looking at this blinding white floor. Um, so first things first, down in my assets, I'm just going to right click and create a new folder um, and call it materials. I'm just trying to be organized. Um, so then I double click on that empty folder and inside there I'm going to create a material. I'll call this floor and um, I'm going to go with something kind of green. And then I can just drag that to the plane um, that I made and uh, now it, it doesn't look so white anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, while I'm doing it, I'm also going to rename that plane um, because I think it's good to be in the habit of naming game objects, something that um, you uh, are going to recognize later. If I only have three things in my hierarchy, it's all good, but later I might have 333 things, and then if I'm looking for the floor, uh, I will be confused when it's not called floor. So, floor. Um, last thing I'm going to do is just because this is a large undifferentiated surface and it'll be really hard to tell if we are successfully moving across it or not, I'm just going to create a couple of objects for the sake of um, landmarks. So in my hierarchy, I'm going to right click and make a 3D object um, that's a cube. Um, and uh, I'll just make a couple more while I'm at it. I'm going to make a sphere. I'm going to make a um, capsule and I'm going to make a cylinder. And um, in each of these cases, I'm just gonna uh, put them out in kind of like a spot <laughs> in the world so that if I'm walking towards them, I can tell I'm walking towards them. Um, you know, I'll make some of them float or whatever. Um, and uh, that way we know where we're headed. Um, okay, so, in the last tutorial, we got our XR origin set up working and it should still be working. Um, so let's fire that up and check out where we're at now. Okay, so again, I'm in headset. I have controllers in my hands and um, if I use my left joystick and push it forward, I start moving forward uh, towards this cube. If I, use my right, if I use my right joystick, I can snap turn um, you know, maybe like 45 degrees each time around in a circle, and then I can move forward again um, with my left joystick. Uh, it probably looks really slow on the screen, but it's kind of like a comfortable slow walk pace in headset. That's something we got to think about with VR development. Um, things that would be comfortable in like a first person walking simulator kind of scenario um, might not be comfortable at all when someone is actually in headset. And by comfort, I, I literally mean like, you know, a sense of uh, nausea or seasickness can come from moving too fast or in unpredictable ways. So um, another thing that often VR developers do, especially for like kind of first projects, um, is make sure that there's a, a, an alternative movement method. Um, typically, we use teleporting as a, a more... Um, uh, nausea friendly <laughs> um, movement system. Uh, teleporting actually is sort of halfway set up by default in the XR Interaction Toolkit's um, XR Complete Origin. Uh, but as you can see, it's red. And when I try to do it, it doesn't teleport me anywhere. So I want to show you how we hook that up in just a minute. Um, but the default control for this is pressing forward on the right joystick. So let's look a little bit into the um, XR origin just to see where some of these settings are coming from. If you twirl this open and then click on XR origin, you will see components in the inspector here that um, create a lot of the default movement effects that we are uh, able to use. So um, here we're seeing um, you know, what, what, the, what we should treat as the camera or as the player's head or things like that, tracking modes, some of those defaults. Um, then here we see the snap turn provider. So that was our um, 45 degree turn that I was describing being on our right hand. Um, the trick is uh, by default, it's also on our left hand too. 
Um, and I feel like that is not the default that I want. I want kind of full forward, back, and strafing movement on my left joystick, and I wanna keep the snap turning just to my right joystick. So in that case, I'm going to uncheck the left hand snap turn action. Um, here you can also change the amount of the angle of the turn. You know, if you want it to be 30 degrees or 90 degrees or something, you can do that. Um, you can also uh, choose whether pulling back on the joystick would turn you 180. Um, I don't like that. I find it kind of surprising and I do it by accident a lot. So I'm gonna turn that off. Um, so these kinds of settings uh, are, you know, they have a default, but you can go change them. Um, the next things down are all kind of uh, the basic helpers that allow some of this stuff to happen, the locomotion system, the teleportation provider. Um, and then this is a continuous turn provider. And that um, is going to allow you to turn without um, snapping, you know, a, a smooth turn. Um, this could be something that you might want on your left hand. Um, but not your right hand, so we could turn that off. Perhaps it's something that you don't want at all though, like maybe you just want the continuous turn to sort of be like when the viewer turns their head and then just keeps moving forward. So if you don't want the continuous turn to happen at all, you could uh, set the entire component to not be active. Dynamic Move Provider is um, the new name for what used to be called, I believe, Continuous Move. This is what's allowing us with that left-hand joystick to, uh, to just sort of slide across the floor like we're walking. Um, here you have Move Speed. If you did find that the move speed was too slow, um, you could turn it up here. Um, strafing is that uh, sidestepping left to right. If you turn this off, you'd probably want to have the continuous turn provider effect where your left and right are making you turn. Um, you can also enable flying here, uh, whether gravity is affecting um, the, uh, the player or not. And then this setting, the gravity application mode, um, in my testing, once we start working with the player's collider, especially if we use the device simulator, which we'll get to in a moment, um, you really want this set on immediately rather than the default, which is attempting move. Again, I wanna separate what the left hand and right hand controls do. So in this case, I'm gonna make the left hand be the dynamic move provider hand. Um, so I'm going to uncheck right hand. And then finally, um, there is uh, the feature that you can use two hand grabbing um, to kind of drag yourself along. Like I think this would especially be good if you were making kind of like a map or um, some other sort of like God's eye view scale um, interactive system in your VR project. Um, I find this distracting. <laughs> in my kind of more first person movement model. So I'm gonna uncheck two hand grab. The last two components on the XR origin are the character controller and character controller driver. These are essentially setting up um, your colliders and uh, you can kind of see that modeled here as like a narrow capsule collider that represents your body. Um, if you need to change things like its um, radius, you know, to be thinner or less thin, uh, you can do that here. Um, you can also set its uh, kind of default height and its maximum um, and minimum heights. Then if you twirl open XR Origin, um, there are a couple of more settings that come in by default on the left hand and right hand. Um, so uh, the left hand has um, its sort of actions and interactors set up and um, it has another grab move provider on it. This would be like a single hand grab, I believe. Um, again, I don't want that in my move system um, to just be able to grab the world and drag myself along. So I'm going to uncheck that. Um, and then on the right hand, um, it has the same thing. So once again, I'm unchecking that. Then each of these hands can be twirled open because they are also parent objects. 
and um, they have a set of interactors underneath them. There is a poke interactor, a direct interactor, a ray interactor, and a teleport interactor. So these can all be useful, but they might not all be useful at the same time. And by default, they are all turned on at the same time. So in my project, for example, I would like to keep um, a, uh, a ray interactor around, but I don't need both hands to have the ray interactor. Um, so in my case, I'll decide the left hand is going to have a ray interactor, but the right hand doesn't need one. Um, so I'm going to twirl open the right hand. I'll leave its poke and direct interactors, which are going to allow it to touch or grab things directly. But the ray interactor, which is sort of like a force grab from a distance, I don't want that on my right hand um, for two reasons. One is I just like to, you know, the immersion of grabbing things when I'm actually, you know, in, in collision with them. But the other is that um, the ray interactor kind of gets in the way of the teleport interactor um, because they're, they're sort of both ray interactors under the hood. Uh, so I'm going to choose this ray interactor, which is the straight white one that um, we've been seeing attached to the controllers. And uh, I'm just going to uncheck the, um, the interactor line visual, the line renderer, and the ray interactor itself. So we're not um, trying to break this prefab by deleting this object. Um, we're not, uh, you know, unchecking the whole ray interactor, which can create other problems because Unity has a system built in for managing all these interactors. So I'm just sort of like leaving it there, but, um, but unchecking its components. And so now if we hit play, we still have that ray interactor on the left hand and we can move with our left joystick, um, but our left and right on the left joystick now strafe to the left and the right. Um, snap turn goes around on the right hand, but hitting back does not make me 180. Um, and uh, hitting forward on the right hand brings up my teleport, but that still doesn't work. So in a future tutorial, I will show you how to hook up teleporting.